All right, so in studio this week, you guys are going to be um, kind of exploring this idea of a daily routine. So each of us, depending on um, you know what our what our home situation is, or how many people we live with, or you know our preferences, whether sleeping late or getting up early, we all have a routine, right? We all hopefully, hopefully you guys have a routine, and so something that you do every single day. Now this can be about you personally, or it can be about a member of your family, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. So you're thinking about this daily routine as a visual language. We're also going to be exploring that idea of symbolism and repetition. So how can you record your daily routine and interactions through a visual organization of symbols, right? So that's what we're going to be thinking about with this piece. So the first artist we're going to look at is actually a local artist. She's from Denton. And what she does is she records data. Now, um, the data could be as simple as a music lesson she took or junk mail or a cycle, a body cycle process. And she records that data and then she marks it. And once she comes up with all this raw data, she uses that material to create these compositions that become radial and they are uh, appearing to be totally abstracted, right? Totally non-representational, but in reality, they are graphs. They are records of information. And so when she uh, displays them, when she, whether it's more of an installation like the piece on the left, um, maybe their meaning isn't totally understood to the audience unless they read her artist statement, but she's able to really take these mundane things of everyday life, right? Receiving junk mail, um, you know, a class on Zoom, whatever the things are that you do every day, drinking coffee, she charts them and then she creates these works that are representations of that. So she's forcing us to really consider and look at these um, things that we just do every day, right? These things that you probably don't think about graphing or, or acknowledging. Now, if you're a runner or you're, you know, counting your calories, you might already be documenting things. Um, and so this would be a good example of kind of a way you could depict those in an artistic way. Um, but many of us, you know, maybe don't document things. And so that's, this would be a way that you could uh, create if, if not a portrait, I mean, I think you could absolutely call this a portrait, but you could create or capture here a um, representation of a person by their habits uh, based on frequency, based on how many times they do something. So that's Annette Lawrence. Again, local artist. Uh, one of my favorites, Jean-Michel Basquiat. Basquiat was an artist in the um, late 70s, early 1980s. He was very, very prolific. So he made lots and lots of work. And he's really exploring here several things uh, with his work. He starts off as a graffiti artist. And so text, uh, simple sim, uh, symbols and iconography are going to be very important in his work. And then he moves uh, to working more on canvas. Um, you've probably heard of the artist Andy Warhol. He did a, a um, compilation or a, a teamed up with Warhol and did some shows. Uh, but he was really exploring this idea of what it means to be a black male in um, this time period where um, we've, we've come out of the civil rights movement, um, and he's exploring this concept of identity. He's exploring this concept of who he is, thinking back to, um, how, uh, black bodies have been represented through time, um, especially through the modern era. He's thinking about, um, daily observations, whether it is music, he was very inspired by, um, uh, jazz performers, or whether it is signage that he would see regularly lived in New York City. So he's documenting a lot of the signs that he would see. Um, he was an avid reader. And so he would oftentimes take books 
and pull stories and words and text and images from those books and then apply that to his work. Lots and lots and lots of repetition. He, you might have seen this kind of crown design before. This is kind of trendy. He came up with that design. Um, and so a lot of repetition. And so you can see in the background of these portraits, there's just um, these kind of line drawings or line paintings of, of repeated images. Very, very uh, typical of Basquiat. Um, so he talked about how by repeating words in his work and by repeating symbols in his work, he's forcing us to confront them. He's forcing us to really look at them. And so you can see like even these kind of red swoop designs are repeated over and over. Um, and so the symbols that you use in this piece can have personal meaning that's not readily understood by everyone, um, like we saw with Annette Lawrence's work, or it can be a little bit more descriptive, like um, you can tell that this is a human figure, right? So they can be more obscure, they can be more um, apparent or a mixture of both. Love Basquiat. Okay, so <laughs> this is a lot visually to look at. So um, what um, Takashi Murakami is doing is he's really exploring this idea of traditional Japanese painting combined with the animation, anime style, um, repeats that over and over, some sci-fi, some influence of global art, and then he comes up with um, characters that are of his own design. Now they may like, look like something you've seen before, but he's combining images to come up with these uh, characters. Lots and lots of repetition in his work. Um, he said that these simple, um, uh, what might at first appear simple forms. Like if we just look at, you know, one of these smiling flowers in this background of the image on uh, the right, you might see this as kind of simple or um, I don't know, youthful or sophomoric, something that is, is, you know, childlike. But in reality, he said by repeating these images, by distorting them, making his own, and then in that extreme repetition, he is actually dealing with more complex themes, um, some uh, concerning violence, concerning um, the fantasy world. So he's using these simple forms repeated over and over and over again to have um, just a representation of bigger ideas, right? So if you're thinking about, okay, um, let's say someone in your family that has um, a routine and you're going to be, be depicting them for this. Just because a flower is repeated here, that doesn't mean that this actually represents a flower, right? It doesn't mean that this person in your family is a gardener, okay? <laughs> or growing flowers every day. These could represent different things, right? These could represent songs played on a Spotify over and over and over again. So your symbolism can be, um, uh, subvertive. It doesn't have to be subversive. It doesn't have to be easily understood by everyone. <laughs> there he is. He's got a very unique style. Again, all those skulls behind him, skulls generally represent death, um, the temporary nature of, of things, but here they could represent something different, right, depending on um, the, the statement you're trying to make. My heart I love Yaoyoi Kusama, and if you take an art history with me, you know of my love for her. So um, Yaoyoi Kusama is an artist who um, is also Japanese. She lives in uh, Tokyo, works every single day in her studio, even though she is in her late 80s. She is really, really dealing with this idea of infinity, infinity. So her work is, um, hyper focused on repetition. The way that she, she has a lot of anxiety. She's been through uh, some uh, sexual abuse and trauma. She has been through um, uh, rejection from her family. She's been through a lot. And so one of the ways she deals with personal trauma and anxiety is creating work that is filling your vision, that is filling a space. And so Again, infinity is a main idea of her work. So she creates dots, she creates nets, she creates um, um, 
cylindrical forms that repeat over and over and over again. And she says that by doing this, she's helping control her anxious thoughts. Okay. So um, maybe instead of um, uh, these being just dots, right? What if each one of these was an anxious thought that she'd had? Right. So thinking about how repetition, how making a mark can represent more than just a decoration. It can stand for something else. It can be a visual language for something else. Love that woman. Yao Yoi. She is very serious. Always wears these fabulous wigs. And Bulkwater is um, Bulk Walter is an artist who is, is exploring um, different ideas. A lot of um, her work is about uh, interior spaces, bedrooms, living rooms. She takes apart those spaces and renders the different uh, elements of them in a larger um, substrate. So she's taking apart what we might have thought of as a compact image and she's depicting them um, on all different parts of the picture. And so what that does for us is it asks us to approach it in a new way, right? When we're seeing it um, kind of um, disassembled, if you will. Uh, her work, she says, is inspired by her Pennsylvania Dutch traditional upbringing, plus uh, some more modern narratives especially surrounding um, intimacy and uh, gender roles. And so her work all, almost becomes like pattern, right? So more obscure narratives, not easily understood there. She incorporates some text, lots and lots of repetition. I love her compositions and how she's really letting things um, travel around that page. So to, to have repetition doesn't mean it's the exact same size, exact same shape. It's a repeated idea, repeated motif, repeated design. Um, the scale can vary. Aboriginal symbols, um, these were specifically used in parts of the Pacific representing um, natural objects, natural phenomenon, organic things. So you could take an existing symbol and explore how you could repeat that to give it new meaning. We see um, Aboriginal symbols, um, Native Americans did something similar, uh, depending on the different people groups around the country. We also see this with hieroglyphics, um, where a symbol, right, a motif, when it's repeated, becomes a visual language. This is an example of um, kind of these dream paintings that are done in uh, much of Aboriginal Australia. And so these, um, they look kind of random, sometimes kind of chaotic, but they are done with this idea of um, kind of a transcendental meditation that someone is able to um, kind of uh, mentally get into a, what we might call a Zen space so that they're able to create work that is um, very simple but connects the human to the earth. And so a lot of the Aboriginal work we see is based on um, dreamings, based on uh, these meditations that the maker is undergoing. Um, sometimes they're transformative, thinking about something becoming something else. Um, oftentimes they take on this, um, even in the making of them, as you can picture um, him, making these dots over and over again, it becomes meditation in itself. And then the viewer, the audience, as we look at the work, we can, our eyes can follow along those dots and kind of join in that meditation. So a um, lot of natural objects, organic lines, you'll see very few hard edges in a carpet painting. Um, you're going to see a lot of kind of um, these organic flowing uh, spaces. Uh, think about what these things could represent. Some of those symbols used, like we saw from the Aboriginal uh, design here. 
So that repetition here is creating a design um, that might read as a pattern. It might read as totally abstracted, right? And in a lot of ways it is abstracted or totally abstracted, but each one of these represents something specific. So again, the audience doesn't have to clearly understand. Sol and Rocco was part of a, a group um, from the 1960s um, called the Harry Who. And they um, were exploring this idea of kind of combining hieroglyphics with Native American symbols in a psychedelic presentation, right? So um, she was inspired by signage she would see daily, routines. And she's just using, um, you know, very limited color palette or no color uh, to create works that are uh, repeated images or they almost look like doodles, okay, repeated doodles. So think about how, um, whether it's yourself or someone else, think about things that um, are going to represent either specific facets of their daily routine. Um, they could be very literal, right? Like this, like this pie here, right? Um, maybe that pie represents a meal. Maybe it represents that person baking, okay? Or maybe it represents a run, okay? They're running off their, their dessert, who knows? So your images don't have to be um, easily understood. Gerard Richter is, um, or was an artist uh, from Germany who takes images and, um, simplifies them down to a code, which is um, going to be a simplification of color. So he would take, um, it's kind of like pixelating an image. He takes an image and he pixelates it to the point that it becomes very simple shapes. These are paintings. Catherine Bernhardt, um, as you look at her work, you'll see like a Coca-Cola, a slice of watermelon, a bird, another bird, some kind of robot thing. So she, um, a cigarette, she takes these images um, and she repeats them in such a way they become very, very flat, very symbolic. But she said that each one of these images has a deeper meaning. So she's, she says, for example, in her artist statement, she says something about like, um, it might be a hamburger or a cigarette or um, an avocado. And we want to read that as literal. We want to read that as, oh, okay, so she smokes and she eats burgers and she likes avocados, but it could be her emotional association with those things. So it may not be a literal, like she's actually eating that or smoking that, but it's a symbol for that thing. And then she does them in these really flat neon type um, ways, which are kind of fun. A lot of all over pattern, right? So her repetition, I mean, she's filling that surface. <laughs> it's fun, like computers, or not computers, sorry, these are doors. Uh, shoes, juice boxes. Josh Keys, um, he is pretty popular on the Instagram. And um, his work is dealing with uh, repetition certainly he incorporates a lot of text and he incorporates a lot of these um, surrealistic environments so where you know instead of he's he's like juxtaposing things from nature with man-made things like this works called summit and so instead of the ram being on a rocky cliff like you'd expect he's on cars right Frida Kahlo, always a good choice. So she is, uh, she was a Mexican uh, artist who created work that was um, full of symbolism about gender roles, what was expected of a woman. Um, lots, you know, if you've taken art history, I like to talk about Frida Kahlo, but her symbolism oftentimes includes uh, monkeys, webs, columns, butterflies, uh, flowers, lots and lots of flowers. And so your, um, your work this week can be more uh, traditional, if you want, in the way that it's a portrait. And then you can include symbols that relate specifically to yourself or the person that you're depicting. Odilon Redon, 
is a French artist who was a symbolist and Redon decided to um, create work that was of the sim, uh, like uh, symbolic but dreamlike. Um, sometimes it takes on a surrealistic approach. So he would talk about dreams and then when he would paint them, he's repeating a lot of the same motif, uh, motifs. So uh, Redon would use butterflies, flowers, uh, this kind of cyclops looking thing, and those would repeat over and over in his work. And they stood for um, these different uh, motif representation of dreams and ideas. Jim Hodge, um, so his work, a good way to describe it, it's very delicate. It has this um, quality that is uh, fragile. He is repeating things to the point that uh, he gathers them in mass. So for example, if you wanted to, um, like this just, these right are flowers that he's made. These are drawings of flowers, but these don't have to actually represent flowers, right? These could represent um, a, a day uh, every time you ate or drank water, right? Um, so this repetition, it's this, these ideas can stand for something else. His work, he says, is often vague intentionally so that people interpret it differently. Sarah Hagel, um, another current internet artist, she um, takes the mundane of everyday life and turns it into these um, whimsical, sometimes chaotic images. I love um, her little sketches that she does, very, very simple. And then the paintings uh, here on coasters on the right. So she's thinking about um, just the day to day, um, like putting gas in your car, uh, writing something, um, and she is making those into these kind of visual journeys for us. Like this, she's seeing somebody wearing a mask, right? So this is a very recent drawing. So she says she documents the human experience. Love this. It's another Sarah Hagel. So you can definitely incorporate text if you want. All right, so here's what you're going to do. Um, if you are done with all the family portraits, you have rendered everybody that lives in your house, then you are going to skip to step three here, okay? Um, if you still have a family member that you have not rendered um, or pet, or you just need to continue on with your family grid that we're making, um, you're going to represent that family member using symbols, okay? Represent them using symbols. It can be symbols of their routine, daily routine, um, it can be done in a more portrait type way. Um, if you are finished with your family grid, right, then you're just going to create your daily routine or someone in your house's daily routine through images. So it's either going to be part of your grid or it's going to be standalone on a piece of paper or a piece of wood or a piece of cardboard, whatever material you've gathered for that. Please make sure that you pick at least five symbols these symbols can be drawn, painted, written, uh, cut out, um, but they need to be symbols that represent that person. They can be very realistic, like, you know, a mug represents, you know, a cup of coffee or tea, or they can be very uh, symbolic, subversive, not uh, easily recognized. You're going to arrange those symbols in a way that it creates a pattern, okay? Um, that pattern, again, it could be uh, really spread out, like some of the artists we looked at, or it could be really close and clumped together, up to you. And then um, you're going to submit on Classroom a finished pic a picture of the finished um, uh, repetition portrait or daily routine portrait. And then um, you're going to make sure it has at least five different symbols, right? And then you're going to um, submit an artist statement very brief about um, what the symbols mean, right? So that when we can look at it, we have an idea of what you're doing. Have fun.